So here it is. I got this moved over to this shelf and this is the one against the wall of the house. Uh, I got everything that was on these shelves, moved on to these shelves, which are down the center of the garage. So this way I'm actually closer to the power and I think I showed you that already where the power actually comes from back here on the wall and it goes up and around and it goes across this old uh, curtain wall into this mess. So the first bit, the white one, is live all the time and this white block right here is a smart bot timer it's a wi-fi timer uh and then the uh this black bar plugs into that smart bot timer so that's got all the lights going into it and this orange cord uh that runs back this way is the light here okay and i said i got all these lights at home depot for i think they're about 14 bucks a piece 36 inch LED, so really low power consumption as well. So now the next thing is to figure out what the hell I'm gonna do with this thing. And I got an idea, and I'm gonna walk you guys outside, and I'm gonna show you. So we're going out the garage, because this is Garage Aquatics 2023. Got a few rocks here I got I can deal with. Um, but here, I've got these large rocks. That thing's two feet long, a eh, foot and a half anyway. And I don't know, three inches thick and heavier than you know what, and a couple of those others. But these long ones, I think what I'm gonna do, because it's heavy, is uh, take the skill saw, and I've got a carbide blade on it, and cut this thing from, where's my finger, from end to end, just cut it in half, and then I'll turn it around. So then I'll put the cut ends against the back of the tank, and I will terrace, these rocks into some sort of like a, a sh shelves going up the back of the tank and then all the scape, the, the soft scape, the, uh, the sand, gravel, and uh, plants will be in the front and I'll tuck some plants in amongst the, these rocks and have some other, you know, different sh size shape rocks, uh, you know, in the front too. So that should get me up, you know, cover that, that four foot tank and also kind of get me up the back ways. So this should be a fun project. So I will keep you posted as I do it. Um, looking forward to it. And I've got a bunch of these rocks that I, I tried to break up. And, and it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, uh, it's some sort of, I think, a sedimentary rock. Sedimentary. Uh, and and uh, so it, it flakes in layers. It's all laid down in layers. So it doesn't, doesn't uh, break up really well. It sort of, you know, tears. And in fact, you can see this on this piece here, where I was trying to bust a piece up in the past, it just comes apart in, in layers. I have no idea what that actually is. Uh, I, I think they might call it leverite. And that's pretty much leverite where you found it, but it works really well. We used it for stepping stones in our old yard and for whatever reason we took this with us. And right now I'm glad we did. Well, this is a hell of a lot harder than I thought it was. 
the stone is a, a lot harder than I thought. I figured it was a lot softer the way it flakes apart, but oh, that's that tough one. So I've made a bunch of passes and wetted down between passes, kind of reduced the heat on the, it's a carbide blade. And that way uh, I can keep doing it without killing the blade. So then I flip the stone over and I'm trying to get through the second side, but my back needs a break right now. this tank on offer up it was 40 or 45 bucks and it's a nice tank and I uh, cleaned it up there's still some crusties up there uh, and I filled it and let it sit overnight and it didn't leak didn't explode didn't blow up sides didn't fall off not bad uh, so the money was good I mean, it was a nice price I used carbide uh, carbide blade on a skill saw and just cut all this stuff in half lengthwise um, and what I'm gonna do is stack them all against the back wall of that aquarium. So I built myself a sandbox. And I was inspired by other videos that I've seen in the past, uh, other fish shops that have uh, sandboxes so people can, you know, work on hardscape so they know what they want to buy. Uh, so I just built this saw scrap lumber, got these uh, two pieces of two foot by four foot by half inch paper coated plywood. We bought a door and it was shipped with this stuff, you know, to protect the door. Uh, and some other old scraps, and these old uh, one by, uh, they're two by fours that were split or ripped down the length. So it's all scrap, it's all screwed together. And then I duct taped the seams to keep the sand from uh, sifting all over the garage floor, kind of keep the mess down to a bare minimum. Uh, it keeps my wife really happy and I love her and I don't wanna, you know, and you know the story. And, and just maybe inspire you to, you know, how easy it is to build a sandbox. When it's all done, I'll take it all apart because uh, it won't fit anywhere. But it stacks really nice when it's all flat. And then I can put it back together if I ever need to. But right now, it's, it's about the right height. It's all going to be right side heavy because uh, the rock work's all going to be mainly focused down to the right side. And then uh, maybe, just maybe, I'll see if I can in integrate a waterfall. Uh, from the top down into this right side also. So we'll, we'll see. All right, this is that same pool filter sand that I've got in the bottom going on in the 75 gallon tank. Great misnomer. I've heard people say it's cheap. I think it was about 30 bucks for this. I think it's a 50 pound bag. Got it at a Leslie Pools local pool supplier. They're a chain. I don't know if they're nationwide anyway, but they're everywhere. And it's nice stuff. It's not really dusty. It's not too bad anyway. cushion and base to uh, hold the stones as I set them in place while I play with them so they don't flop around too much. All right, so it's a work in progress, but this is what I come up with so far. And my wife came out here and said, what are you going to put along the glass back there? Good question. I thought about smearing, you know, some streaks of silicone that the rocks can rest against. She suggested maybe put silicone at the back of it, on back of the rocks, you know, like the little cushions you buy for cabinet doors. And then we've got a sheet of half inch styrofoam. So maybe I will cut that to fit back here uh, behind the rocks and keep it hid. And then maybe pour some sand because there'll be a half inch gap um, behind, the, behind the rocks. I won't do anything to the end. So I don't want to have to try and trim that out. Maybe I'll put some of the little silicone bumpers there. But there's going to be, if I can get this transferred, there's going to be lots of little hiding places for fish. I love the shelves. I really like the way that worked out. 
and it seems pretty stable. I don't know. Definitely want to hear your thoughts on this. And then if anybody knows, I think possibly this rock has copper in it. I'm not sure. That green right there. And I know copper is toxic to shrimp. Does anybody know if copper is toxic to fish? I don't think it is. I have to do a little homework on that. But that's kind of it right now. So now i got to figure out how to transfer this. I think uh, my wife suggested chalk and make a map. Take it apart and make a map. So take pictures. I'll take and then try and recreate it. The top two are easy. They're just two big, huge, heavy pieces. And then uh, a couple big, heavy pieces down below also. That's just a different rock, but it's the same color. Different kind of rock, too. Same color. I think I picked that up in Arizona, Bullhead City. And then uh, all this other narrow pieces. It's all the same stuff. And then I've got little flakes of it, too, that I can drop around the front of the sand. But I think what I'm going to do is just point. I got a bunch of crypts in my farm tank, so put a bunch of crypts along the front here. And I've got those tall, slender crypt linearis that I'll probably put in the corner here. That'll go fill the corner. Uh, maybe I'll tuck in uh, some Java ferns in places. Uh, maybe some Anubias here and there. I don't know if I'm going to put any wood in this tank, or some wood, or if I can find any decent wood. We'll see. So I had a bit of a change of plan after my wife's suggestion. I'm going to run some of that styrofoam, it's about half an inch thick, uh, up the back of the tank, probably uh, about that high. It'll be just below the, the line of the rocks I'm going to put along the back. And I'm going to put a piece of that styrofoam along the bottom to cushion, to cushion the weight along the bottom. I think that might help. So we'll just cut some pieces to fit, set them in, and then uh, we'll take it from there. And I think I'm also gonna add a little silicone. Eh, maybe that's all right. Yeah, up in this corner here, because I wanna see if I can put some sort of a low waterfall in here. And at some point I may even take this shelf out or move it up one more notch It'll make it almost worthless, <laughs> but give me a little more room on top of the tank. So this is how I handle the styrofoam. This will go out just about the full length of the rocks on the bottom. And then the, the back will be just short of the ends of the rocks. And I think that'll be all right. Uh, and I spray painted it black. So that way there's no glaring bits of white coming through, I hope. And then I'll probably, I don't know what I'll do, drop some sand or something. Uh, to fill up that back space between the styrofoam and the back of the rocks. And I can always stuff some plants in there too. And then this is how I handled the rocks that were on the sandbox. I just stacked them off. The top rock is at the top of the screen here and the bottom layer of rocks are at the bottom. And the right end is on the right end there. So then I'll just transfer these starting with the bottom up work my way up and hopefully hopefully it'll work hopefully it'll come back out the same way I'd done it on the sandbox so I think this is it there's the the top of the tank from the inside Let's see if we can get closer and see I know there's a lot of reflection but there's some nooks and crannies and shelves or shelves little holes so we shall see so all but that one regular well right here with that one stone on the bottom uh, that's the only one touching the glass all the rest are not well, we shall see looks pretty good so I'm gonna back fill it with sand and then if I get really brave I'll put some water and I'm gonna use a hang on back filter in that corner, put a heater somewhere in this corner. And I think I said it before, I'll say it again, I'm gonna try and build some sort of a waterfall in this corner to get water flow to move 
from this end down to this end where the hang-on back filter is. And it's supposed to be a 70 gallon rated hang-on back, this 75 gallon tank. Should be all right because there's more than five gallons worth of rock in there. So in sand by the time it's all said and done. Hopefully that'll do. So now I'm putting a thin layer of fluval stratum in the area in front of the rocks between that and the glass. And I'll just move out this sand on top of that fluval stratum and do the same thing all the way to the back there. Okay, so there we go. That's gonna be basically the planting zone. I'll put some epiphytes in the rocks. Um, you can see the difference between the, the colors of the fluval stratum. This is a fresh bag. This one's been open for a while, so it's just oxidized a little bit, but that's all. Shouldn't be any difference in the results. I like using it. It's a good substrate for, uh, for plant growth. So I've got about a half an inch of the fluval stratum in here. I topped off this area is a little low. And you can see I've got the sand bermed up on the glass, so I don't have the substrate showing in layers. No, I just don't want it in this tank. I've got it in other tanks and I don't mind it at all. But it's just a different look. So there it is. Sand covered substrate all the way around. Little piece of substrate sitting there on top of that rock. Now we seem to pop up somewhere. I'll push some sand back under there, flatten out just air. Now I'm not sure what kind of fish I'm going to get in here yet. I got to go over to Coachella Valley Aquatics in Indio and see what Brandon has. See what will go in here. Um, I don't know if I want fish that are going to do a lot of digging and tunneling. This, as a recap, remember this rock is all setting on styrofoam, so there's nowhere to go underneath it. They can get back behind it a little bit, but none of that should be a problem. I used small pieces to wedge the big pieces. It's all, then I used MD fish tank tap test. Tap, 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 tap. And these pieces here are wedged in there pretty tight. And that's locking everything kind of vertical and backwards a little bit. And there's a sheet of uh, styrofoam uh, against the glass in the back. So there is a bit of a gap right here down to about that level, it goes straight across. So it keeps the rocks from hitting the back glass. So this is where I start planting. Put a little water in here because that sand was really soft and I've got that layer of a uh, fluval stratum underneath it. So I'll just make it easier. So those are six uh, cryptocorian spiralis in the back there. And they should ideally get pretty tall. Maybe they'll hide the heater. Um, and the vote's still out on whether or not I'm going to keep this. I already bought this. This is the uh, Aqua, or I'm sorry, Aqua Clear 70, and I may end up with uh, uh, the Fluval. I was asking everybody about the FX2. I I saw the FX4. I might even go that. It's a little bit more, not much. It's not a big price difference. By the way, these are uh, Crypt Winnie Bronze and Crypt Winnie Green. Now these are all in these little mini two inch pots. They're just actually slightly less than two inch that I've been growing them in. They're fairly nicely rooted. Let me see if I can pull one out for you. That's one of the bigger ones. And I'll just go ahead and plant it right there. Without tearing it out. There we are. See, it's got a pretty nice root ball on it. And then I just sort of uh, set it on the sand and twist it in. It should be okay. They've been growing completely submerged for quite a while now. Pretty good root mass. And just lay it on the sand like that. And then just twist it in. And when I fill, after I get these planted, I've got to get more plants. But in the meantime, I want to get these going. And then I'm going to put some, uh, I'll tuck some java fern in the cracks in the rocks. Uh, maybe an Anubius or two. I don't know. So, and then I'll put some scatter gravel down. But I want to do that after the plants are in. 
that's where it is. I'll show you a bit of the magic here. Uh, for those of you who don't know this, I just unpotted one of these cribs. All right, there's the root mass. And I'm trying not to block the light, but you can see it's divisible. So now there's two out of this pot. And there's a third one. All right, so when I bought these, I was able to divide some out. Now I'm able to divide some more out. So out of that pot of one, I have three. Yeah, they're smaller, but they're gonna grow. These have all done really well. So when you get plants like this that you can divide, jackpot. So here it is full. A lot of bubbles on the glass, a lot of bubbles coming up. I've got that um, Aqua Clear 70 in the back running. Got the heater on. The Aqua Clear 70 may or may not stay here, it depends. Uh, I may end up getting a, a canister and hook it up down at this end. I really don't know yet. Uh, and I may just get one of those, uh, what do they call them, wave makers or whatever, the and set it down at this end to get water flowing across this. Uh, just to make sure I don't get a lot of sediment at one end. It looks like stuff's moving. I'm following a little piece of uh, debris that's in here. So I've got uh, one, two, three, four different uh, types of plants. I've got the Cryptocorn Spiralis back there. Uh, tall, narrow, and it looks like it's already getting sucked up the, uh, the intake for the hang on back. And then I've got green cryptochorine wenti, uh, wentii and then cryptochorine wentii bronze and then narrow leaf java fern. I was going to put some uh, uh, wind love java fern in here and by the time I got this far I completely forgot so I think it'll be alright the way it is. I like the way it's tucked in the rocks and I think once it establishes it'll fill out nicely. And then I'm sure some of you know you've probably seen the videos in the past of uh, the cori fry, the bronze cori fry I have. I think there's gotta be at least 50. I think there were closer to 60 originally, but there's probably still 50 or so. Um, and I'm thinking I, and they're barely, they're like a half an inch. I might just drop them all in here once this tank gets settled and uh, you know, start getting some detritus on the ground for them. Um, I'm gonna put uh, some rocks in, some, you know, some, uh, just a few, you know, outlier rocks out here and then some uh, couple different sizes of scatter gravel. And uh, I want to get some uh, uh, the Sagittaria subulata, the dwarf sag. And, and it's hard to find. And a couple that I found, they want to charge for every pot they ship. And I don't want to play that game. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contact them and see if, uh, if I put an order for five pots or whatever, if they'll just, you know, uh, do a, a single charge. So because that's, that's kind of chicken. So I don't encourage anybody to do that, to pay, you know, five times shipping on one. It's all going in the same box. So let's not get greedy about this. Anyway, and I'll look at a couple other sources. Uh, I think, uh, well, I'll look at a couple other sources and then when I find something, I'll let you all know on this. One thing I want to say about this, this is that uh, pool filter sand. It's really clean. And I guess it should be for a pool, but it is really clean. It's it's uh, a 20 grit, so it's kind of like so like a sand blessing sand. I don't know what kind of sand it is. You know, I didn't read the label. I don't know if it would say anyway. If it's a, a quartz based sand, I might end up with a, a is that right with the quartz based sand or is it the silica bit the silica based sand? You end up with a lot of the um, diatom algae. Well, we'll see how that plays out. And then I bought a, a copper test kit because, see that green spot on that rock there? Get my finger in there. And, and when I was uh, splitting some of this rock, there was some really shiny coppery looking that uh, hadn't gotten oxidized uh, because it came out of the center of the rock. Um, so if there's copper coming out of this, the fish will probably be safe. Um, shrimp won't. So we'll see, I'll get, I got one of those, uh, um, now whatever the, 
the test kit is. It's the same brand. And my brain just fell out of my head, so I don't know what one it is, but it's uh, API. I'm sorry, it's the API uh, copper test kit. It's supposed to be for salt water, but you know, copper's copper wherever it shows up. So we shall see. So today is February 4th. This tank's been up and running since the 26th, so I think that's nine days. So I'm going to start to cycle it now. And all this wood's been floating in here for about a week. And it's got a great layer of uh, bio slime all over it. I'm going to rearrange it, but it's been floating in there. So hang on. So I've got a filter out of another tank. This one here. Hopefully it's good and mucky. So what I'm going to do... Is just squeeze some of this out. It's full of sludge. Full of uh, beneficial bacteria. Filter is well established. This is going to be a cloudy mess for the rest of the day. And a lot of this will get picked up in the hang on back aqua clear that's there. It's an aqua clear 70. That's what I started with. Um, I've gotten a lot of responses back on that poll I did. Uh, some people like the Fluval, some like the AquaClear, some had some other suggestions. But right now I'm going with the AquaClear because I have it. And uh, going with one of the Fluvals, you know, they go up about 300 bucks for a FX4. And that may be the option. I don't, I don't know. Right now this thing seems to be working. It's got a good current. That was my biggest concern, was to have a good flow going through the tank. And then I'm just going to go stick this back in another tank now, or the tank that it came from now. And we'll let that settle out. And I'll be putting fish in it, hopefully, in the next week. I've been uh, a little hesitant. I just haven't left the house. I've been busy doing other stuff and just haven't felt like going out. So one of these days, I think I know what I'm going to put in here. I'm not really sure yet, but we shall see. All right, well, here it is. I think it's done, mostly. I've got some more of the Sagittarius subulata coming that I'll, I'll mass that along the bottom in the front right there. Maybe a little around this rock, I'm not sure. We'll see. I like the way it spreads, it's kind of cool. I put a bunch of sticks in here and soaked them for about a week, they all sunk. Uh, then I took them out. They've been sitting in a five gallon bucket drying out. So I put a few back in. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep them or not. We'll see. But there they are for now. Um, I got these new um, Echinodorus, new sword. Now I can't remember what they are. Brilliant, huh? And the tag is not in reach. So maybe I will put it, put it up. And I got a bunch of bronze crypts, the Crypt Wendy Eye. Um, narrow leaf java fern stuck between these rocks um what else i got a an anubius that just got i think it's congoensis or something like that that just got hammered in another tank so got it cleaned up it's stuck on a rock right now and it's going to sit in here for now so i got three of those kind of doors right there and then tucked in the back there's the green crypt pointy eye and crypt spiralis um, i think it was spiralis and I'll put that up too. I'll put the names up. So, and then, you know, just uh, rocks, a couple of these big, uh, I might add some more of this uh, cracked rock right here. It's, uh, I think it's called desert gold. It's a landscape rock. There's some pieces right there. So the next thing to do is populate this thing. And I think what I'm gonna do is angelfish and maybe a bunch of different tetras and then quarries on the bottom. And I think that, and we'll see what else. And ultimately, maybe some auto sink lists. And, and then uh, who knows if I can find some plecos. Um, maybe some of those. The branches are from a tree called Brachychite and Popolneus. Uh, bottle tree, Kurzung bottle tree, whatever. So this branch still had leaves on it. Came down in, the, in all the winds and stuff. That's where the, these all came out of a tree in our front yard. So they're sitting in here, and I know they get that white biofilm on it. I don't really care about that, because fish will feed off of that. 
Um, and at some point, I'm testing this, this water to see if there's any copper coming out in the water. Because when I was splitting this rock, I think I already said that, it looked like there was maybe copper in, in, in it. So copper ions in the water are toxic to invertebrates. Um, I think you've probably seen my video on how I put a, a copper tape across the top of tanks to keep snails from tank hopping from 120 to the other in my in my bottom shelf on my uh, on my orange Home Depot rack. But anyway, I thought I'd get this far, share it with you. I've got a 200, nah, maybe it's a 300 watt heater back there. Uh, and right now it's the uh, AquaClear 70. That's subject to change. I may end up with a Fluval FX2 or, or an FX4. There's not a big price difference. Um, I squeezed off a couple um, big sponge filters in here. Hence the sediment that, you know, I didn't think I was going to get that kind of sediment. But the tank's seasoned. The water is seasoned. So I will put some, uh, I've got API Quick Start. And when I put fish in, I'll add some more of that too. And we'll see how it goes. Two days ago, I dropped three of the alder cones in here. And I thought, uh, be good for the water. And it gives that black water look. And personally, I like it. And I got a lot of glare here from the other tanks and all. Sorry about that. But it's got a really, I like it. I think it has a really good feel to it with the, the dark rock in the back. And let's try an end view. No, nope, that's not much better. I gotta, gotta uh, sponge down the inside of the glass. There's lots of little just particles hanging on it. It looks pretty good. And I'm really happy with it. I'm gonna start stocking fish. All right, so now it's been about 40 minutes. These quarries have been, these bronze quarries have been sitting in uh, this box. There's six of them. So let's put them into the tank. Hopefully they like their new home. Um, this is that 75 gallon. And uh, they should be happy little fish. I found a shrimp that I got that got in here, so I ended up taking that out because I don't want red cherries in here, like I said. There they are. All right, kids, everybody out of the pool. All right, so now it's been about another half an hour since uh, the Emperor Tetras have been in their cup acclimating. So here they go. There they are, let's see. In the cup, they all look uh, pretty peeved. Hopefully they'll get over it once they're in this big tank. Yeah, they're out of here. You know, some of them are. Always a couple that are first to go, want to explore. Come on, children. Out you come. Last one. And there they go. And there they are. Well, here it is. I think it's been set up and running for a couple weeks now. But I finally got the last of the plants today. And I just put those all in. I had some that I grabbed out of other tanks, Sagittaria, Subulata. But I just got a big order from uh, Marcus Fish Tanks in Texas from Amazon. And those are all the ones with the, the trimmed leaves. You know, I had the ones that don't have the trimmed leaves, like... Uh, that one there and there's one back here so these look really nice i had to rinse them off there was some duckweed on them so be aware but i ordered from him before i will order from him again um but there it is that rock ledge wall and a terrible reflection and i probably should have wiped all the drips off but you know what that's it so i've got 10 ember uh, i'm sorry 10 emperor tetras in here that came out of a 40 breeder. And I put those in, I think two days ago now. I think maybe today's the third day. And uh, six bronze quarries. 
And the next day, so that was two days ago, the next day, uh, they spawned. And I think I've already posted a video on that. I will add it to this part too. But what a nice surprise. And then this morning I found another little spawn. So this tank, I really like the way it came out. I like the way it looks. I got a lot of the bronze crypts in here. These are, um, I think they're called red melon, um, the kind of Doris, the, or the swords, 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 and that narrow leaf Java fern tucked into the, between the rock ledge. Um, and then just it's, uh, I've got fluvals, uh, fluval stratum, some of it worked its way up. I'll cover it with a little bit of gravel. Uh, and leaves from a brachychiton or a Kurzung bottle tree that's out front, and branches from that same tree. Uh, I'm just trying to give it a little bit of a river effect, a river look. Um, and some of the river stones and, you know, like that. I'm happy with it. 75 gallon from offer up for 40 bucks. And coming around the thing here, this is uh, one of those fluval breeder boxes. So let's see, 214 and today is 216. So yeah, two days ago, about 11 a.m. I found them. Uh, the eggs are down in the bottom somewhere. Um, and there's a couple white eggs, but the rest look good. And the last batch I had, they were hatching, I think, in about three days. So maybe tomorrow we'll start seeing wigglers. Kind of cool. Those emperor tetras are really pretty too. So this is a fun tank. I don't know if you can see the underside of that crypt leaf, but those are more cori eggs. So I'll just collect that leaf, put it in the breeder box. Wonder how many other leaves have cori eggs on them. They just keep, I guess there's one way to, to get your coris to breed, or at least these bronze coris is uh, move them, put them in a different tank. I don't know if they just freak out and get happy or, or what. But, uh, sure worked this time. And there's lots of little ledges for them to hide under. Had these guys a good long time. There's actually five adults and one juvenile in here. Juvenile's probably as close to an adult now as as the rest of them. But it just sort of surprised me in the tank that they were in. there the last time they spawned they spawned all over uh, uh, some Amazon sword leaves so I just clipped those leaves off dropped them in a fishbowl with an air stone and a few days later there were little wigglers everywhere and I think I've got probably 50 they're still small they're probably you know, I don't know maybe maybe they're a half an inch they're about four months old now But anyway, let me know what you think. Love your feedback. There's only one Anubius in here. Um, right there, it wasn't doing well, so I tried to salvage it out of another tank. And I super glued it to that flat stone, and it was still a little loose, so I wrapped a zip tie around it. I'll pull it and pull the zip tie and put the rock back. 